Hey, cheers. Cheers, bud. Morning. Another day, another rear wheel test. Today, we're doing it on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, the new flip style foldable from Samsung. Now we're going to test out this phone all while we explore as per the usual, but first things first. Coffee, check. And this is 787 Coffee, which is a bit of a local chain at this point. They originally started as a coffee farm in Puerto Rico. 787 is the area code for Puerto Rico, by the way, but quickly started popping up coffee shops here in New York City. But in 2017, Hurricane Maria devastated their farm and destroyed 97% of their crops. They had to then close over 20 coffee shops at the time because they simply just couldn't supply them with coffee. Since then, however, they have rebuilt and now have 17 coffee shops here in New York City, plus one in Puerto Rico, one in Texas, and one in New Jersey. Where we are now, though, was their first location since the hurricane, in my opinion, kind of has the best vibes. And the iced coffee here is even served in Capri Sun-like pouches, because why not? Okay, now the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 at first glance has one very different feature to it. The new, much larger cover display. We'll dive into that deeper in a sec though. Is there anything else different about the design? Well, we have Victus 2 versus Victus Plus Gorilla Glass, so it should be a bit stronger, apparently. We have the same IPX8 water resistance, so no dust resistance is what that X in place of a number means. But the X means that it can be submerged in up to a meter and a half of fresh water for about half an hour, which is nice. But again, it's the same as the Flip 4. Now the inner display is also identical and on paper, kind of hard to tell apart. But the brightness of the Flip 5's inner display is definitely brighter than the Flip 4, which which is always a welcomed upgrade. So besides those and the obvious change to the outer display, we also have one other important design change. The hinge is new, and just like the new Galaxy Z Fold 5, it folds fully flat now. Now this type of hinge has actually been available for a while now on other foldables, but it's nice to now see Samsung using it. The hinge is also very solid and easily positionable in any position compared to some of the other ones that I've used on flip style phones. So that's also nice and allows for the benefit that most folding phones inherently have they can be their own stand. So long as you enable flex mode inside the lab section of the phone's settings, you can bend the phone with any app open on it and it'll automatically move the app up to the top of the display and put a semi-useless control panel on the bottom half. So you can now set the phone down on a table and say, watch a video, do a video call, etc., in a very laptop-esque way. Honestly, as I've mentioned in other videos on foldables, Samsung kinda has the most intuitive way to get those apps up onto that top display, regardless of whether you use that control panel underneath or not. It's kind of a good way to make up for the fact that Android itself doesn't really know what to do with foldable devices just yet. Besides the hinge just making it feel better overall, it's also not a wedge when it's closed. And it makes the device thinner as well, which is always appreciated, especially in the world of folding phones. Speaking of how the Z Flip 5 is now thinner, we're actually walking by the narrowest building in New York City here in the West Village. Yeah, segways. This is 75 and a half Bedford Street, and it's a thin three-story structure built in 1873 in a Dutch style. Now, according to real estate listings, it has three bedrooms, two full bathrooms, and a finished basement apparently, but all of it is only nine feet, six inches wide. According to the Village Preservation website, the site was, quote, originally an alley where delivery carts and the like passed through often, end quote. It was apparently a carriage entrance for the Hetty Hendrix Gomez estate next door, built in 1799, which is considered the oldest house in the neighborhood. Now reports have said that the interior of the house measures just about eight feet wide, and city records note the total square footage at 999. Now looking at photos online though, it's obviously been renovated recently, and I, I don't know, I, I kind of like it, no? 
Would you live here? I might live here. The residence is located near the Cherry Lane Theater, a hundred-year-old theater company that leased the house to actors like Cary Grant and John Barrymore, who lived here during their show runs. Possibly, though, its most famous former resident is Edna St. Vincent Millay, the Pulitzer Prize-winning poet who lived there with her husband sometime between 1923 and 1925. A lot of big names in a very tiny house. Okay, let's talk about the biggest change now on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Motorola did it, so Samsung had to do it. The Flip 5 now has a much larger cover display. And actually, Samsung decided to give it a new name. This is now the Flex Display instead of the Cover Display. Regardless of the name, I think a larger display on the outside of a flip-style phone is something everybody wants. Compared to the Razer Plus, the shape for the cover display isn't the entire outside of the phone. It has a small cutout. Kinda. The outer display works the same as it does on these type of flip phones, and then we have a series of widgets, essentially, that the manufacturer creates for the phone that you can swipe through to get various quick access to information. You can now also pinch out to see them all and get to them faster, which is nice. For the Flip 5, there's a collection of clocks for the main page. Then you have 11 other widgets at the time of me making this video that range from calendar widgets to timers, quick access to contacts, etc. As usual, this always feels to me like a smartwatch UI kind of built into the outside of the phone, which is useful in some ways. Here though, at least, we do get a lot more info at a glance because of that larger display. Now, you can also run full apps on this outer display, just like Motorola lets you with the Razer Plus. Unlike Motorola though, Samsung makes you jump through some hoops to do it. You have to download the GoodLock app from the Galaxy Store. Without getting into too much detail, it's a suite of apps that Samsung makes that allows you to further customize your Samsung phone that started life out as a lock screen customizer, hence the name. You then download Multistar, it's called, from within there, tap on iHeart Galaxy Foldable, and add the launcher widget to the outer screen. And you can then add apps from the phone to there to be launched on that display. Not all of them work, as some will tell you to open the phone, defeating the purpose, really, but it does allow you to launch most apps. I like it for Spotify, Notion, and even to respond quickly to Telegram and WhatsApp. Comparing it to the Razer Plus, display that might have a larger screen technically, but it has the choice of using the entire outer display or having things come up slightly. And truthfully, you did use it a lot in that upper way because otherwise most of the buttons for apps are down there naturally and they get hidden by the cameras. So the usable space for both screens is pretty similar actually, even with the cutout on the Flip 5 as it uses that for navigation icons and keeps the app in the upper portion automatically anyway. Personally, I like the look better of the Razer Plus's outer display, but obviously the outer display isn't the only important thing when I'm flipping the phone. Speaking of flippy clamshell phones, this is the clam. And no, it's not the local dive bar in Family Guy, unfortunately. Now it opened in 2014 and is the same restaurant team as Little Owl, which is a restaurant I used to love coming to when I lived over here years ago. If you can tell by the name, the bivalve is everywhere on the menu. But even if you don't love clams, I'm not a huge fan of the raw ones, but I do love a good cooked one. There are other bivalves on the menu, like oysters is probably what I would go for if I was looking for something raw, as well as just some other great seafood dishes. I, though, am going to be basic and get the spaghetti and clams because you just got it. So someone's got to try a clam. Clam, clam shell, clam shell phone. <laughs> try the clam. Oh. <laughs> cheers. Hey, cheers. Cheers, bud. Raw clams? Uh, not my favorite. Raw oysters? Fine. Raw clams? You do? Cooked? Fine. No, cooked raw? Not so much. This cooked ones we had in one time. All baked clams. Baked clams. Okay, so what else is different about the Flip 5 versus the Flip 4? Well, we have an upgraded chipset, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 instead of the Gen 1. But the bigger thing for me lately is that this is now a Snapdragon for Galaxy chipset, which basically just means that it's one overclocked, but it's been optimized by Qualcomm the maker of the chipset, and Samsung. And frankly, in the S23 series where it debuted, it felt better than I expected and battery life was better too. So here's to hoping for some of that here. Some other small changes, the USB-C port is now USB 3.2 versus the 2.0 that they've been using for a long time. So for the potentially rare times you need to plug in the phone to pull off a lot of stuff, it's a lot faster to do so. Wi-Fi 6E is also in here now, which most people don't care too much about, but it's a nice jump in speed for Wi-Fi if you have a Wi-Fi 6E enabled router. If you want more info on what Wi-Fi 6E is, I did a whole decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, that I'll link below. The cameras are the same hardware, but processing has changed a bit. As we've shown many times, the hardware only tells part of the story for photos, and the processing can make a huge difference. In this case, images from the Z Flip 5 look a bit more contrasty and overall just a little bit better, 
to me at least. But as always, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. The selfie camera though is slightly different in that the aperture is a bit faster, so it should technically let in more light, but it's also slightly wider, which I think is probably a bigger difference for most people. And that's nice to see. But again, an inherent benefit of folding phones like this is that you don't have to use the selfie camera and you can use the much better cameras on the rear and the outside display as your viewfinder, which is also another way that the larger outer display is more useful too. The battery on the phone is the same size and it is still a flip style phone. And it seems that no matter what, that means not great battery life. Something about the thinness plus the dual displays, I don't know, but I'd say it is a bit better than last year, actually. Again, not sure if that comes down to the optimized chipset or just the newer chipset, but regardless, it seems a little bit better. It died earlier and I recharged it with my battery pack. But here is my screen on time and usage for anyone curious about that. But as always, keep in mind that today was not normal. I used the camera way more than anyone would. But here is another day that was more normal. So you at least have something to compare it to. Okay, calling it a night. And let's quickly just kind of finish our thoughts about the Samsung Galaxy Flip 5. Firstly, the price is the same at $999, but they do at least now give you 256 gigs of base storage for that compared to the 128. So you double the storage, which is nice. But at the end of the day, the real big differences between this and last year's model is that much larger display on the outside and also the fact that the hinge folds Flat. And I'll say, I can't help but think that if Motorola didn't come out with the Razer Plus with a full screen on the outside, that Samsung might not have launched that. They might have just had a more iterative version of the flip. But I think that kind of screen maybe pushed them a little bit forward. And when you really think about it, as of last year, Samsung has 80% of the foldable market globally. And the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 was the most popular folding phone of last year globally with 47% of the market. And sadly, when you're that far ahead, there's not a lot of reason to innovate. There's not a lot of reason to change that much. But there you go. Let me know what you guys think about the device, about this weird little format that I do. Always appreciate hearing from you guys in the comments below. Also, I will leave a link below to the best price that I could find on the Z Flip 5, and I'll try to update that as regularly as I can. If you're not already subscribed, please do so and ding the bell so you can notify when I do videos. Also, check out the rest of the Real World Test series. We explore a lot of places with a lot of tech. Go check it out. There you go. I'm exhausted. It is very late, so I'm gonna get some sleep. Good night. Birds. Angry birds. I'm sorry, I'm leaving soon. Just like the new Galaxy Z Fold. Things are just banging? What are we banging? Can't win. Can never win. Jingly pop. Got a loud little color. Keys. People. It was cool in the 90s. I don't think it's cool anymore. I'm also biased because it makes sound when I'm trying to film. It's probably still cool. Or having things come up slightly. Car is coming. I can hear it. Here it comes. There it is. People are loud. Here they come. I will wait. I'm the idiot filming outside. Nope. Electric bike. Ready? Here it goes. 
Qualcomm Snapdragon 8. That's a lot of noise, bird. Your wings are very flappy. You have a Wi-Fi 6E enabled router. Can I have this thing? Put this in my face. Minion Ed Edition. Yeah? What was that, a West Coaster? Oh, you go West Coaster. Ah, no such thing, but I respect <laughs> your opinion.